Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus said to them, Can you make the wedding guests fast when the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. And he told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new one, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here we have one of the early encounters between uh, the uh, scribes and the Pharisees and uh, others. And Uh, The scribes and Pharisees in particular uh, get really upset with Jesus. Uh, From the very beginning of his ministry, they've just been astounded by what he said and what he's done, and they don't have any place to put it. And they feel like, of course, that what he's talking about uh, doesn't fit anything that is within the realm of their comfort zone. They are wanting to be in charge. They like to demand uh, certain strictures having to do with the law, etc. And so Jesus' teaching is quite disconcerting. Not only that, but the things that he does on the Sabbath and what he says in his teaching, all of these great against everything that they're trying to do to control the people. Well, here we have, again, the scribes and Pharisees talking to Jesus And talking about the fact that while even the disciples of John the Baptist, even the one who is uh, proclaiming the uh, coming of the Messiah, even his disciples are fasting according to the law. And so do the scribes and Pharisees. But they say to him, but you're not, your disciples aren't fasting. They're not spending time in fasting and uh, all of that like uh, the others. And Jesus' response to them really must have shaken them quite a bit because he talks about the fact that there's something going on right now that is akin to a marriage where when the bridegroom is with them, when there's uh, the bride is with the bridegroom, and there is feasting and celebration. These are uh, great days to eat and drink and just have a wonderful, wonderful celebration. And he's basically likening his ministry to that, that it's very different from that that comes out of the old covenant. And one of the illustrations he uses, and many of you have probably heard me teach this before, but he talks about his ministry as being like new wine. And, you know, new wine is still fermenting. It's still uh, letting off gas. And so there's a lot of activity in new wine. And so it needs to be placed in a wineskin that's able to expand. And what he's saying is that old wineskins are so old, they've stretched to the max. You can't stretch them anymore. And so if you put new wine into that kind of a skin, the skin is going to burst. And he said, you need to put the new wine in fresh wineskins 
so that it has that ability to continue to ferment, continue to expand, and let the gases do that work of uh, making the wine uh, uh, tasty and, and luscious. And he said, you know, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins. And the, the thing that is so beautiful that I discovered many years ago is this wonderful little um, insight into the world of Jesus' day. And that is that the wineskins of Jesus' day, as I said, when they get old, they basically become uh, brittle and basically don't stretch anymore. And so they... Uh, only ex when there's any uh, wine in it that is still act active, like a new wine would be, it would burst the skin. But a skin can be made fresh. And that's why I like the fact that new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins, that, that there is a differentiation made there. And the skin, the freshening of a skin, called the newing of a wine skin, comes from the uh, the tanner who is the one who works with leather taking a special oil and he just uh, massages the oil into the skin and as he does so that skin takes on new life and it's like i said called the newing of the skin how like that uh how like that is for jesus to talk about the freshening of a wine skin for the new wine that you don't need to, it isn't like there has to be new people in order to receive this new revelation, this new wine. The people just need the anointing, that rubbing in of the oil, which is a, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. You know, oil is used in baptism. Oil is used in confirmation. Oil is used in ordinations. And that oil, again, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit's work. And so as the Holy Spirit works in the lives of not only those in that day, but us in this day, we are able to contain that fresh wine of the work of God that is always new, always fresh, and always alive in our hearts. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This is a wonderful encouragement for all of us today that Jesus is doing a new thing on the earth. And that new thing is now 2,000 years old, but it is as fresh and alive today as it was back then. It is not old and stale, but always new as God unfolds his plan through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. So be encouraged that as you continue to walk with him, as you receive the sacraments and receive the graces that God has for us through reading scriptures, through praying and other means of developing our personal relationship, that that fresh oil is being poured out and placed in us that we might contain that new work of God. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.